Hello students, this is CA Pragnesh Kanapar, your audit faculty for CA final and CA inter level. I am coming out with this analysis of November 22 paper for CA final audit. All right. So November 22 CA final audit analysis video is what I'm coming up with. And I have done a very detailed analysis over here for every single question where you can find the suggested answers. All right. And uh, you know, you will get a fair bit of idea about this particular paper. Uh, so normally I upload the analysis immediately after the exams are over within three, four hours. But I thought that let us change the trend this time and uh, let us do it a little at a little later stage where students are a little relaxed, you know, and not uh, very much at the time of the results uh, because uh, then, then the students are a little worried. So I think this is the most relaxed time, mid-December. And I think uh, you're in a good position to see this whole paper analysis. Okay, so without wasting time, I want to keep this video short. Uh, we will go ahead. So uh, the very first question uh, that you see over here, of course, this is the analysis of the 70 marks descriptive paper because for MCQs, whatever were asked in the exams, uh, students told me that four or five were a little tricky. Otherwise, it was manageable. Uh, but we only get news for MCQs, all right, from the students and uh, a little bit of hint of what was asked in the exam. But when it comes to descriptive, all right, uh, we have the paper given by the ICI. So look at this question number one A. Okay, so question number 1A is, is drafted as a very big question, but if you see, I will straight away come to the point. So the, uh, the auditor over here wants to withdraw, right? he wishes to withdraw from the engagement and the client relationship, discuss the issues involved. Now multiple times it has been discussed in multiple uh, you know, essays that whenever you want to withdraw, you have to see what are your legal requirements, you have to fulfill them, you have to discuss the reasons of withdrawal. All right, so we just don't abruptly withdraw. But this is about client acceptance and continuous procedures which is discussed in essay 220 and it is also discussed in SQC1. So to be very, very, uh, you know, technical uh, and very specific, this point they have taken from uh, the ICAI pronouncements, uh, specifically will point to find these answers in SQC1, all right, and also in SA220 when you want to withdraw from the engagement. So if you have given reference of SA220 or SQC1, that is great. You will get the marks for that. And then general points of withdrawal that we have discussed, then you have to write it. Okay. But I think mostly the students would have fared well in this particular question. I don't see students getting zero over here. Uh, question 1B is a very, very repeatedly asked examination question from SA505 external confirmation. Yeah, so whether auditor can send a negative confirmation request, yes or no. And in a very exceptional item where auditor should have sent a positive confirmation request, what if there is no response, then auditor should perform alternate audit procedures. This question is there straight away in our question bank. And I think this question will be there in every professor's question bank also. All right, because this is a very, very repeatedly asked examination question of SA505. So students have given the concept over here. Uh, this PDF you can find on my app in the study material section of the app. All right, the analysis PDF. Uh, so I've given the concept reference over here. For my students, I've given this TA book reference. So they understand that every single point was there in the book and where in the book. All right, and then I've also given ICI reference, you know, from where this has been asked. Okay, now next is question number 1C. Okay, uh, on question number 1C, yes, you are required to state whether tax audit report can be revised and if so, under what circumstances. Now, uh, there were many students who are enrolled with me for sure, all right, but there are many, many students who saw my free revision sessions and were connected with me on my Telegram group. If you are not, you should for sure get connected. And I had specifically asked this point, you know, that, okay, this point can come in your exam. And in fact, even the above questions were covered in my Brahmastra revision, which was uploaded for free on YouTube, all right? Uh, I, 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 this video is more for educating you and not for marketing. Otherwise, if you ask me <clears throat> in the comment section, <clears throat> every single question, I will be able to map it with the Brahma's revision apart from one question I think every single question I'll be able to map it over there so I hope that all of our efforts were helpful to the students also now uh, tax audit report it can be revised if the underlying financial statements are revised then tax audit report can be revised if regulatory requirement is there to revise it then we may have to revise it so there were three points that you were supposed to uh, write over here and for such kind of topics I have given the module page number reference. So May 22 onwards, the module that has been uploaded, that page number reference I have given over here. Okay. <clears throat> now, for question, sorry, little bad throat. 
question number 2a all right so for question number 2a my god i have always i have always said that this is a very very conceptual thing concept of materiality and most importantly this is a very very important question even from interest level factors that can help you in identification of an appropriate benchmark all right and uh, it is there in our sa320 question bank this particular question and ICA pronouncements obviously it is there but I have always covered in my revision sessions also that this is a very 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 important uh, particular question and then they had asked that in these two cases what kind of benchmarks you will set if it is a regular profit making entity we can set a percentage of profit before tax as a benchmark and uh, look at this if it is a you know, loss making entity then we can go with percentage of turnover or so and we can set a benchmark then uh, next is your question 2b question number 2b yeah i had specifically asked this in my audit of cfs revision video all right that please 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 do this point some student had commented also in that video that sir uh, this point is very important even i feel that this can be asked in exam all right so please mention any five aspects which are to be given in the notes to the separate financial statements of the parent and subsidiaries which are not included in the CFS. So something that is there in the standalone financial statements in the notes, which is not covered in the, which is not given, which is not supposed to be given in the CFS. Uh, you, you may be hearing that, you know, I am uh, you, taking this particular session in simple English because I have students in North India, South India, everywhere. So I'm using simple English so that everyone understands this particular analysis. All right. Okay. And uh, if at all you have some language issues, then I have given it over here also. Okay, fine. Uh, na next is your question 2C. Okay, oh, <laughs> this is so, uh, this is, this was there in May 18 paper also, I think. What would be the items of discussion with respect to differences between forensic audit and other audit? Always an important question, a module question. So if you have just left the chapter of investigation, due diligence and forensic audit in option, then no one can help you. But even if you have done your module questions or even in the past paper questions, then also this question is always, always there. All right, look at this. Uh, so first four lines were just taking you to that particular topic. And I've said forensic audit, difference between forensic audit and other audit, and it's over here. Okay, I've given module references also for your convenience. If at all you find any clerical error, it's there is there is no clerical error, but I, since I've given many references, if at all you're not able to reconcile something, you can download my app. All right, the description is over here. The link you can see it's in, in this bottom line. All right, and uh, you know you can ask doubts over there. We can chat also. All right, all right. I'm, I'm always there. I try to be you know available for everyone. A little bit of delay can be there in the responses, but I'm always there. Question number three A. All right, please advise the statutory auditor the areas in which direct assistance cannot be taken. My God, I had asked students. To please do this, you know, SS 610 direct assistance. The most important points are, you know, the factors that we need to consider and the areas in which direct assistance cannot be taken. And they have taken up the second important point, which I said, all right. Whether statutory auditor can take internal auditor's assistance in this particular scenario. If you see the scenario, okay. So uh, if you see the scenario of, of, look at this, I think it is of estimate. Checking of the accuracy of aging of accounts receivable and provision made towards doubtful receivables. So estimates and judgmental areas, we cannot just give it to the internal auditor for direct assistance. Little bit clerical work can be given. There is no problem in that. So that is why they asked this in brief answer so that you can explain it. All right. Next uh, is from automated environment question 3B. You see over here. Okay. Uh, automated environment, what should be the auditor's approach during planning, execution and completion phase? Clear, clear module question that has been asked over here. All right. And I've given that a page number references. This is all memory game. You know, you remember that answer, you write it and you put it over there. So they wanted five focal points. All right. With respect to planning, execution and completion phases, you will find it in my regular course notes, fast track notes. You will find it in my revision videos. Everywhere this is there. All right. Then uh, next Professional ethics question, I think this particular question, everyone would have attempted nicely. I am I'm very confident on that. Okay. So this is a very, very repeatedly asked examination question. I think it is there in every professor's question bank. It is there in all the books. All right. And it was there in my revision videos also. It was there in my regular course, fast track, everywhere we have discussed it. All right. That if chartered accountant in practice is not maintaining books of accounts, it is not going to work. 
So that is a compulsory requirement under Council General Guidelines 2008. Okay. Now question number four A. Ah, oh my God. A lot repeatedly asked examination questions were there. General comment of this paper is general comment of this particular paper is that you know it was very manageable apart from two three questions. Yeah. So otherwise, but largely it was manageable. All right. So bank audit internal control aspects in credit card area operations of the bank. Module copy paste question is over here. I have given the references. Then briefly explain each of the five principles. Now normally this is not covered by the students nicely uh, because in professional ethics and stuff, you know, they are mostly with respect to the provision based knowledge. But these five fundamental principles are being taught to you from your basic interest level, your integrity, objectivity, confidentiality and all of that. Okay. While evaluating the risk and control at the entity, the auditor should take cognizance of the prevalent direct and indirect entity level controls. Again, automated environment, direct and indirect entity level controls, it was so clearly explained everywhere. Alright, what are such controls and give examples. This, these are all important questions. It's not like they have asked from very much inside the module and stuff. If you compare it with July 21 paper or maybe Jan 21, November 20, my God, they had investigated modules and asked questions. Alright. This is not that case. Even if you have done the IMP part, which is marked, uh, you know, by the professors, which is, you know, which students are also aware of with the past papers, then these questions are always there. there. Okay. Next is uh, question 5A, audit report concept. <coughs> so, or, yeah, this question 5A was good, you know. Uh, I, I just want to read this because uh, you see previous questions are just theory questions. You know this, you write it. All right. CA UMA is the statutory auditor. The company is engaged in the production of electronic products. During the course of audit, CA UMA obtained certain audit evidence of, okay, so obtained certain audit evidence of incorrect disclosure of related party transactions and structured finance deals, which was not considered with affirmation, leading to misstatement in the financial statements. Okay. Discuss how CA uh, UMA should deal with the situation in auditor's report and different options which can be considered. So there are incorrect disclosures of related party transactions. There are structured financial deals which lead to, uh, you know, misstatement in the financial statements. So for related party, there is a comment in Caro. Plus, obviously, you know, there can be a qualified or adverse opinion in this particular case. All right. So you have to cover every aspect of audit report, you know. Then these are some... Uh, you know transactions which can have uh, you know an adverse effect on the company so you have to bring section 143 especially if i say section 143 subsection 3 clause j where structured financial deals you know have been given over there so there are lots of things uh, for the reference of sa 550 so this is the analytical answer the students were supposed to write and if they have written it i think most of them will be there in the range of three three and a half marks or so Maybe because no matter how much ever we try, institute will come out with two, three points in the suggested answer in this particular answer. There are many students wouldn't have written. So I do see students getting some three marks or so over here, but I see rarely people getting five marks. All right. Okay. Even if I am attending, I may stop at four marks in over here. I may not get five on five. Let us be very frank. Okay. Question 5B. Question 5B. So over here, there is again uh, this question, but again, if I see, I, I'll just take it to the summary because I've already done that work so that the video length is not that big, you know. Uh, audit, audit, audit report concept, there are CARO 2022 clauses over there and then you have to modify opinion. So again, there is a company audit uh, play and audit report play. So question number five largely was dedicated to the audit report discussions. All right. If you do this and if you solve this, you will really like it, you know. So they have talked about CARO, all right, and uh, they have talked about audit report impact that needs to be considered. But CARO, there is a play of two clauses and I have already given those clauses over here. So uh, all the work has been done by me in the notes. This video is just trying to connect you with what I have done in my notes. Okay. Then uh, next is question number 5C. <clears throat> okay, this again question number 5C. Future maintainable sales, whether it will be maintained in future or not. My God, this is module copy paste question from the topic of investigation. All right. There are four points that need to be written over here. So few questions were just, you know, memory game. Whether you know this, you write it, you get your marks. Okay. I have given code word also for this to the students to remember. Because I do focus on these small, small topics. Otherwise, then there is a big problem, you know, if you just focus on big topics and do not focus on the smaller ones. Question number 6A, again, I had marked it as very important in Caro 2020. NBFC registration. 
what is a core investment company or right, what are the specific reporting requirements to be considered by an auditor in respect of core investment company because when it comes to core investment company a company which has you know majority of its fund invested into particular conglomerates all right then in that core investment company obviously there is some uh, exemption from the registration requirement this is just a summary video all right so there is an exemption from registration requirement that is why they are connecting core investment company with caro all right so uh, then then you know if the group has more than one core investment company then it needs to be reported there are lots of things uh, that can come over here that is why core investment company they have given it as a separate question all right i have given the references to the students i have given the references to the students to understand where this can be found in the module where this can be found in our in our textbook and where exactly you have to refer what is this concept okay question 6b but uh, 6a was covered in even in my revision video huh? 6b look at this 6b is again about uh, peer review one of the favorite favorite uh, topics but it's about peer review reporting stage that when peer reviewer has certain observations he has to give a draft report so it is about that okay over here i have given this reporting stage of peer review where you can find over here in my book where you can find in the module okay then question number 6c okay question number 6c is about discuss a few circumstances where audit program will have to be suitably altered you can see my revision notes also regular course fast track everywhere i have said that you know circumstances where may we may have to alter the audit program all right obviously if there are some changes if there is a sudden increase in the volume of and if there is a sudden exceptional item that you have found based upon your past experience and lots of things okay so i think if uh, there there could be some category of student who had committed who has committed a mistake of writing the audit program for cinema house that was not the question in fact even if they have not given these these things it does not matter correct but the last line was important the where audit program needs to be suitably altered by the auditor i really want institute to eliminate this particular thing where only the last line decides the question all right in a few questions like 5a 5b you saw that you have to read the full question whereas in most of the questions the last line was deciding the whole question all right okay and then i think uh, this is with respect to your professional ethics yes i have given all the references and where you need to look at so professional ethics this is a very very simple question Look at this about sharing profits and all of that. But I think students would have just rocked this particular answer, and I think they will score full marks in this particular question. Okay, uh, so that is my analysis over here for questions. I think we have covered everything, and it was very fast. Yeah, but it was mostly about you know uh, you realizing that how you are supposed to prepare. So there has to be a holistic preparation in audit subject. It cannot be just that you are inclined towards one or two topics. All right. again uh, you know standards professional ethics caro uh, audit of banks investigation due to so lots of topics you know nbfc and stuff we are review they tried to covering lots of topics over here okay uh, so one thing is very clear uh, holistic preparation is going to give you marks and we have all the courses uh, for audit subjects so if at all there is any problem i am there if you don't want to subscribe and you just want to have a chat with me you can download the app and i am still there don't worry about it all the very best for your exams and uh, for students who have already appeared i really 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 pray that i see you as my colleague i see you as a chartered accountant very very soon thank you god bless you